Yo, it's Poppy Zoo all the way from the 337, and I'm checking in with Nola Zine. This episode is brought to you by the Loyalty Club, one of the hottest brands out where they keep their items limited and only for the loyal few. Check us out online at theloyaltyclub.us or if you're in the New Orleans area, you can check us out at our flagship store, 841 Fulton Street. You already know what time it is. Only for the loyal few club time. All right, so tell the world where you're from because, you know, for the people who don't know, I mean, what the, um, like, 337 is and all that. Shit, it's in the middle of Baton Rouge and Lake Charles. Is that is that area in the middle of Baton Rouge and Lake Charles is the country. I'm really from Sicilia, but I'm going to say Lafayette because y'all going to know what that is. It's the 337. It's crazy. <laughs> it's probably good down, you know. Shit. Yeah. To be honest, bro, it's just like Louisiana everywhere. Every man really for himself until you find your people. So... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just keep your head on the swivel. Just like it would be out here in New Orleans, bro. You just got to lock in and focus and just build your real team, for real. Because it's every man for himself. So, you know, I've been having, like, I've been seeing some, like, controversy on the internet between, like, Lafayette and New Orleans. Like, so I'm going to ask you, hey, who got the best food? Oh, uh, 337. That's no hesitation. I'm sorry. And so Easy. when you come down here, you don't feel like, you know, if New Orleans food is, 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 is like, rocking with it? It's straight, but like, I ain't gonna lie, y'all don't really uh, season too good on this side of town. Gee, y'all, y'all good though, but y'all come to Lafayette, y'all gonna really eat. So, like, when you say you don't season too good, like, what do you eat at? Like, you eat in the French Quarter, you eat like, in, do you go to the actual hood? I ain't gonna lie to you, yeah, that's the problem. We go to like the tourist spots, we don't go to the the hidden gems. And that's white food. people food. Yeah. I don't think it's gonna be that good. <laughs> you gotta go to the hood to eat. Eat. What you got, really good. What you got for us to try? Hey, we rock with my partner, um, Larry Morrow. We got like five restaurants, Morrow's, different places like that. They got some, they got some seasoning on all this food, like some seasoning. Yeah. You got, you, you just gotta go to something like some hood and like pralines. They got the exquisite seafood. They got some stuff you gonna really have some, some, some seasoning on. You gonna be like, yeah. No, but you can't go to no the French Quarter or some walking just thinking you about to have some real good food. No. Like, even the people that work, all you got to do is ask the cooks. They're like, man, don't eat it. They going to tell you not to eat it. <laughs> so, yeah. But I just want, you know, I want to know how people, you know, feel. Like, I never had food in Latvia. Like, man, you got to try And, like, when I leave Louisiana, well, when I leave New Orleans, I'm flying. I ain't even driving. So you ain't even. So I don't, I, I've been to Lafayette, but I never stopped in Lafayette. Man, if you ever in Lafayette, come party with BFL. We're going to show you a good time. I'll and it's promise. crazy and it's crazy because my partner do parties in Lafayette. I never went. Jay Lee. Shout out Jay Lee. I just never. Like, I ain't coming out there. I ain't Man, driving. We, I hate driving. We cook good. We're going to cook. <laughs> we cook <laughs> we good. Do everything good. Man. We have fun, dog. We turn it up. We live. Because we finally can live. Shit was hard. So, like, you know, growing in that area, like, cause, like people always know certain parts of. Louisiana, you know, they got the New Orleans, the Baton Rouge, the Streetport. But, like, I think every the Lafayette area always come last. So, like, what's the difference from Lafayette from, like, the other three? All right. New Orleans, bro, is really its own little world. Y'all, y'all separated yourself from the rest of us. So, y'all just got your own culture out here, lingo, whatever. Y'all do y'all. We not hating on y'all. We love y'all. Trust that. We love y'all. Like Charles, they got their own thing. It's just like Lafayette got that countryness, but it's like we want to be city, so it's like it's ratchet, but it's country, so it's like man, it's just it's weird, but it's it's fun. On <laughs> the cool, it's crazy though. Yeah. What about Baton Rouge? Hmm, Baton Rouge, they tough. They different. They they just more fast paced. And Lafayette is, it's like it's slower, slow down. Like you know, Baton Rouge, you gonna get lost in it fast. And, you know, I've been a street for it though. Like, Shreveport got a different culture as well. You know, they still got gangs. So, you know, it's got a different little, you know, world out there as well. I've never been to Lafayette, so I can't speak on, you know. It's like Lafayette want to be like the other cities, but it's just, we country, so it's just, we just, uh, it's hard to explain. You just, it's just, it's weird. It's country. It's, but, it's like, a, you know, the thing with New Orleans, and also, like, you know, shout out Change of Plans, and because he from, from Natchitoches, like that's the first two places that was ever in Louisiana. So like, so like you know, New Orleans automatically feel like, hey, we're not from Louisiana, and because we was from before Louisiana. So it's like you know, and plus if you in the middle of the city, everybody from certain places gonna say they from this per- place first. They, like they're not gonna say I'm from New Orleans. Yeah, they, like they gonna say I'm from the Nolly Uptown. They're not even gonna say New Orleans. So they automatically separate everything. But I think some, I think like a lot of black people just separate things. Like even if you're from Atlanta, man, I'm from Song Three, uh, 
Yeah. I think it's just like a black thing. Yeah. Like, I never heard a white person say I'm from just Connecticut, or like, like a certain hood or something. I think it's just a black thing. Like, how you find it, like, but see, but the difference when I saw with people from Lafayette, like, all of the small towns from around there, they'll just say I'm from Lafayette. Yeah. They ain't gonna say I'm from St. Martinville or something. I'm, I'm, I'm like Lafayette every Cause it's it's so many little. All right, well I'm from really Cecilia. It's a, a small town, fifteen hundred people. St. Martinville probably got three thousand. Bro Bridge, it's like so. It's, instead of just being Cecilia, you ain't gonna know what that is. So we gonna just all say Lafayette is the three three seven. So, but like if you from there, it's just like here. Yeah, I'm from here. I'm from there. I'm from Woo De Woo, whatever. But to y'all, yeah, we from Lafayette. And yeah. so it's like everybody cousins in your hood. Yeah. And everybody fucking each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to keep it real, man. It's nasty. Yeah, because people don't want to admit that, you know. It's cousins nasty. be fucking cousins. It's nasty out there, man. I'm not doing it. But, hey, I don't judge people who doing it. Do y'all. That's <laughs> y'all business. I ain't doing it. Because you never thought about, it, like, rocking one of your cousin's world. Nah, fuck no, man. Like, no, cousin. No. Because, you know, I, I interviewed a few I I people. Some girls were like, man, you know, four cousins don't count. I don't even know how to get to the four cousins in four. Man. <laughs> If you grew up with me, and I don't even care if we not even blood. If we grew up like cousins in the yard, I don't even look at you like that. That ain't for me at all. I, I, I kind of think that's freaky. Like, you know what I'm uh, saying? Uh, You're a freak. You hit, you hit somebody that was in your grandma's house. Uh, mm-hmm. You know that's your cousin. <laughs> I get it. So, how you came up I'm like, with your rap name? Shit, my whole life I've been going as Poppy. And in high school, my favorite rapper was Fetty Wap. So, in high school, people started calling me Zoo. Zoo, and it was just like, I'm Poppy, and I'm Zoo, so my name is really two different names, I just put them together, but I'd rather y'all call me Poppy or Zoo, don't say Poppy Zoo, because it's just too much, just say Poppy or Zoo, and we good, we family. <laughs> Shout out Fetty Wap, I wonder what Fetty Wap had the first time he came to New Orleans, yeah. I did a concert, this dude, man, I promoted the concert, this dude came to New Orleans with some dreads, but he had, a, he had like a heck up. So when he came, when he came, like the first day he got dreads, he just put dreads in his head. Mm-hmm. Man, the people want their money back. I was so mad. <coughs> like, I'm like, this, then he only performed two songs. Like, this dude is tripping. But he had your girl with him, too. He was popping. Yeah, man. Yeah, Sky. So shout out. And he also did some videos down here, too. Yeah, Free Fatty Wap, man. Yeah, Free Fatty Wap. <laughs> so I, I was mad at Fatty Wap. Like, this nigga, how the fuck you put dreads in your head from a, from a, like, having a, having a fade? Now, he actually uh, he was, commented on my first video that I ever released, too. I actually talked to him. I hey, did, cool. I, I did a little work with him. But yeah, he got locked up. And him and all the people cool. Yeah, Free Fatty Wap. That's, that's the GOAT. <laughs> shout out Fatty, man. Shout out Fatty. <laughs> For real. Gotcha. So, like, you know. How old were you when you first realized that you was gonna start um, like making music? Shit, I ain't gonna lie, I started rapping at about the age of six. But like really rapping, I didn't do it till after high school, but around my city, acts since like Tess Elementary, bro, I've been battle rapping. They had dudes using Lil Wayne raps, like all that other uh, shooter verse. I used to, I, looking back at it now, I probably wouldn't beat it, but I was beating it. In front of my peers, I've been that guy yeah. in my city. Like, and so he was beating one, you know, <laughs> yeah. beating the Wayne verse. Huh? Cause I can tell you that verse right now, cause the dude used to rap it to us so much, but we so young, we not even knowing that was Lil Wayne, and I'm just going off against it on my head, and I'm beating it like so many doubts, cause I come from the south, and when I open up my mouth, all bullets come out. Bang, die, bitch, nigga, die. That's the verse. I remember it, cause man, I used to eat it. <laughs> in my, you know what I'm saying? I used to do me. I've been doing it. I ain't gonna lie, I've been doing. it. So, like, do you remember all, like, your first rap that you ever came up with? Nah, but I can tell you how I learned how to rap to Boosie Set It Off. Oh, yeah, that's how I learned how to rap to Boosie Set and It you Off. you just said how young you were. <laughs> I was saying how young you were. Uh, yeah, that's how I learned how I to rap. I remember Boosie first coming out being 16. That's how old I am. <laughs> yeah, that's how I learned how to rap to Boosie Set It Off. I just, I stole this cadence and I learned from that. And it just, and then we used to beat on the table. It used to, man, it used to be crazy. I've I been doing it, dog. I was born with this shit in my blood. I'm telling y'all, I'm coming. Hey, hey so, like, you being from, you know, Louisiana, <laughs> Who you think had the most influence on? Well, who you think had the most influence on on the world? Boosie or Lil Wayne? Wayne, that's easy. Right. For Louisiana, now who nah, is nah. the Boosie. Okay. It's, <laughs> it, let's be real. We gotta be real. Boosie, Boosie, that guy in Louisiana. But the world, man, we ain't got babies in Atlanta, Cali, New York. You know what I'm Everybody saying? Everybody Louisiana babies. Yeah, but as far as Louisiana, everybody. If everybody a Boosie baby. Boosie, Boosie, my number one in Louisiana. To me. 
But like as far yeah, like you said, nobody can touch Wayne. Wayne on a in a in a in a category of his own. So, but as far as Louisiana, Boosie. Nah, that's my guy. I've and I agree with you, but like you know, the problem is the law like, well, you know, sometimes they want to be from Louisiana. They like Boosie ain't you know, ain't nobody in New Orleans rocking no Boosie. For me. Yeah. <laughs> but like when you go anywhere outskirts, you know Boosie is. And but I tell people Boosie had the whole chili circuit since he was sixteen. He run the whole from Texas all the way to Virginia. If I can and get, build, he still get paid to this day off the same songs. If I can get build a fan base like Boosie, that's what I want. Cause it's like you, it's loyal. You know what I'm saying? You can't cancel nobody with a real fan base. You know what I'm saying? So, I love Boosie. I can't lie. <laughs> I Boosie can't be canceled, huh? Nah, you can't. Cause it, he he real, bro. He he him too. Even with his the shit he say wrong. He so him to a fault. Like, what could you say? Like, you Boosie. know, it's Boosie. Like, <laughs> that, and that's what I'm gonna try to be for my fans. I'm gonna be me. But like, I know it's lines you can't cross or some shit you just don't need to speak on. But I'm gonna be me. Right. And you know yeah. what I'm saying? Well, I think you know, I think the game changed. You know, the rappers start to get it. You know, and the more craziest thing you say in the interview, the more you are gonna stay relevant to like keep your music. But like, it's more than music now. That's why Boosie talk about all kinds of topics. No one he probably shouldn't be talking about that. Yeah. No one he probably would have did that before the internet. Yeah. Cause you know, I remember when I was young, I like, you couldn't call no one a rat. Like you, you had to really know a person was a rat. It was like, and nine times ten, times, rats still kill us. You can't go out and do the rat if you ain't like ready for what the, like what come with that. So like now the internet, everybody rat. Like yeah. they got people making up paperwork cold people. But you know. But Boosie also realized that, you know what, I can talk about all kinds of stuff and just keep my name in the algorithm. Yeah, that too. Like a lot of people doing that, like, like a lot of, like a, if a lot of older rappers looking like clowns now, it's like, man, yeah, it's, I ain't no dude move like that. He it's a way to go like, about it to me, you know. And saying? some dudes are like, man, I don't think he should ever, I don't think he should ever open his mouth. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, all your credibility from the 90s or the 2000s is gone. Yeah, what it is. Yeah, certain things you don't speak on, but like with Boosie, he stand on what he speak on every time. He don't ever back down, so you gotta respect that. He did back down one, huh? He did back down on somebody, like somebody. They, they, they on about that one. Oh yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. and with the P, yeah, he don't want to talk about P. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he didn't back down, so you gotta call him. He gotta all call right, his yeah. spade a spade. All right, you the same way he won't call, you gotta call him. You got that. You got, got it. it. So, do you have any brand new music or, or like features coming up? I got a uh, big, big feature with No Cap on my next coming up EP until the album. That's going to be dropping around October, November. I'm just lining up these next videos right now. But yeah, I'm uh, and I'm opening up for Boss Man D-Lo next Saturday. That's going to be crazy. Great opportunity. I'm ready to rock it. For sure. Gotcha. So, what separates you from every other music artist out there? I mean... Everybody got a story to tell. I got mine, they got theirs. I'm just me. And I just, shit, I'm going to tell it the way I tell it. I got my own flow, got my own sauce. And I, <laughs> shit, I really, I just try to make real music. Something that's going to last. Something, man, like my mama would listen to, you know what I'm saying? For real. Some timeless music. That's what I'm on. Shit. Gotcha. So being in the music industry for a while now, tell us what you enjoy most about it and what you actually hate about it. Man, what I really enjoy about this music shit is performing on stage. That's the only time I ever feel free in this world. That's the only time I feel like I ain't got no worries, no nothing. Now the bad side to this is these 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 guys don't help you for real and they just take your money over and over and over if you let them. It's a dirty game, for real. Trust, it's dirty. But if you want to do it, you got to get through it. So just keep pushing. Sports mode. (laughs) So, if you could date anyone in the music industry or the, like, entertainment world, who would it be and also tell us why? I ain't gonna lie, man. I'm gonna keep it real. Carl Roy, I like small titties. That is Carl Roy. He said Carl Roy. <laughs> I don't even know, man. Carl Roy. I just like small. That sounds like a boy. Carl Roy. <laughs> no, Carl Roy. Carl Roy like the small titties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That little booty. I like small. Uh, I got old lady, so I'm good. Now you like but, that small booty? But I like it. Yeah, I like it. Don't freeze up now. Yeah. You gotta but, tell him. But hey, but yeah, when she lacking the back, she gave him the cake. 
That's the one, huh? Facts. Gotcha. Nah, thanks. So, who are your top five greatest music artists of all time? It could be any genre. My top five? Shit, number one, me. Number two, Boosie. Number three, Wayne. Number four, gotta put Fetty Wap. And number five, Honeycomb Brazy. Free Honeycomb. <laughs> That's my top five. Y'all don't hate on it. Y'all pick what y'all want. That's me. So, like, you know, with everything that's going on with Honeycomb, do you think that, you know, people, like, overlook that, like, if a dude can really rap? Like, oh, yeah. And, like, a lot of people don't give him his credit. That, yeah, that dude. And it's like, man, everything he rapped about hit the news, for real. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he real. So, real like, real. you know, if having a song with, you know, I'm like, no cap, and, you know, if we're putting, you know, if we're honeycomb in your top five, do you think that if it's some of your, if it's some of your brand new music, it's kind of I'm like influenced by the, you know, the I'm like mobile, I'm like music scene. Oh, I ain't gonna lie, no cap. Well, that's what the crazy part. Like I listen to no cap the most. That's like my favorite rapper. And yeah, but they have like three real, I mean lyricists. You know, they got Rallo, no cap, and honeycomb. Yeah. And they had a few other people that have been doing their thing too. Honeycomb. I got a big influence on me because he helped me realize like you can get your own flow and talk that shit talk that shit on your own pace like you know control the like you can flow the beat how you want to flow it so yeah honeycomb do got a big a big influence on my flow for real right now i can't lie when i think about it just the way he talk on beats i just been trying to work that way into my my flow yeah so how do you feel about hey but the way of the music industry going like Hey, but the way the um, like direction going, cause you know, like a lot of people becoming like TikTok stars. Some people not even helping up, you know, for other people going through things. Like I remember a few years ago, everybody used to look up to Meek Mill and things like that. It, it, it was like not the internet trolling, trolling me. So like, how like how do you feel about the you know if the way I'm mean, hip hop is going right now? Man, I just feel that that's all happening to people who. I don't want to say it because I don't know them, but if you're faking who you are, it all come out and, and it's like the people can see that, bro. And it's after a few years, once once they expose the real you, if you wouldn't be in real, your fans not going to stay with you. So that's why I say just be really who you are from the jump. Not going to lie. Meek Mill, I just cannot unsee him bunny hop. Ever since he bunny hop, he messed me up. And did it? I always thought that it was like, did it? Yeah. <laughs> ain't, 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 like, ain't no real man going to do the things he do. But I'm not knocking him for being whatever he, he can. Yeah. But I just think it'd be fake. Like, certain rappers speak on certain things. Yeah, you ain't like, you know, it. like, I don't like the way how the, how the Drake thing played out. Like, all y'all went against him. But, like, the people that are supposed to help up for him ain't say nothing. So, I'm like, I just don't, like, I think the industry is just so fake. What I think it is is that money. Nobody want to get their checks cut or, or, or blackballed out there. Man, I'd have helped Drake. I know Drake will get me a hit. I'd have been headline, but I'd have been head first with Drake. Yeah. It depends, though. It I'd depends. have been on the. Yeah, I, I'd have been like Birdman, talking on all the. Talking on his songs and everything at the end of it. Yeah, fuck you, Drake. I'd have been saying all the Because I know Drake go make sure I'm good. He with the Jews. That's who run the head music in the do. Yeah. You seen Birdman look at him. I still need that check. That's what Birdman I'm saying. Birdman doing the, the comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OVO. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what I see, man. Hey, but this, this it's, game just, like, the more you see shit, it's just, like, it's controversy. That's why, like, they don't think they promote the blog. Like, the only, like, I mean, the biggest bloggers only stay relevant because they're controversy. Like, academic post all kind of wild shit. Yeah. I just, I don't, I just, that's why all these rappers coming and going. They ain't doing nothing that's really sticking. They just, they come in hot. They do some controversial shit. And the next thing you know, they, they ain't really ha doing nothing else after that. They coming and going. I, man, I'm trying to stay. Well, people, yeah, but well, people don't like speak on the real truth. Like, the only reason Baton Rouge is, like, the biggest mute, like, 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 if it has the I mean, spotlight on them right now, is because of controversy. People like negative things. Mm -hmm. They shoot for that. Like, <laughs> like, people, like, speculate so much. Like, you don't really know if them dudes really beefing, but you just hear that music. Like, yeah, I, I know. You just start to get, like... Then you start to like, kind of um like, or like invest your time into them dudes beef. Like, man, he said this. I know he did that. Yeah. You don't know having a rapper don't really be doing none of that shit. 
You nah. can't even like you can't even stop a beef because like because like nine times out of ten it don't be the rap it. It'll be one of their partners. Yep, yeah, just pushing that shit on and it ain't really even that. <laughs> for but real. I don't think they realize, man. The fans real. It, like you can beat the state. The fans when they great, they know everything. They know everything. They watching every live, every 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 gun you posted, every every. They watch it. You can hear you on your phone already. Yeah. They done, they done tapped in on your phone. They're, 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 and if the fans coming, they came for a reason. You hear me? They already got what they wanted. And they have a ninety nine percent conviction rate. If you know why? Ninety nine percent of niggas out here telling. Yeah. <laughs> That's the truth. That's what the fuck going on. So you gotta like, you know, even these interviews, people come on and say crazy things. I don't let people see nothing crazy. My thing, I like, cause I'm not coming to court with you. I'm a convicted felon. I can't help you, my boy. You're going to take me to jail. I, I, if the camera footage is lost. you Because that way you were trying to say I'm a rat because I had to come to court, but you said something dumb. That way I'm like, ah, we cutting that out. Yeah, the game, <laughs> the game fucked up right now. But if people want to be so hard now, everybody want to be a gangster. Everybody yeah. can't be a shooter. Everybody, they, people forget how to be themselves, bro. That's it. Everybody I've never seen so many shooters in my life. Every, every rapper a shooter now. And then the crazy part about it too, they just a lot of them when they beefing, they like to say I'm not a rapper, but you rapping. They, they want the rapper check, but <laughs> not a rapping. rapper. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Yeah, them niggas be crazy. But every, but every, like, like you know, everybody, I want to trade that that role. Like I'm a street man until street shit happens. Hey, listen, my. I grew up in the streets my whole life. That's all I ever seen. That's that's not where I want to be no more. I'm man. looking into that. That's not where you want to be. The streets man, I mean, ain't cool. I made mean, 37 in two weeks. My worst regret is becoming a convicted felon. Because I still got to think like a criminal. If somebody run in my house and I shoot a nigga, I'm going to be trying to play that shit on my girlfriend or my wife. <laughs> like, I still got to think like a criminal. I can't even be like, oh, man, dude, ran my house, I shot him. Mean, it's just, it's like, it's like the fucking decisions you make as when you're young just won't be in the streets kind of hinder you for your whole life. But they don't understand. Then you know Louisiana is a racist state. Our governor is putting so many laws that if you do something dumb, you might you might spend at least ten to twenty summers in that bitch with no good time, no nothing. Nah, for real. And everybody, I remember last year, everybody want to switch. Now I don't niggas taking switches up, throwing that bitch away. Fans grabbing that. Everybody won't be a gangster. Like if them niggas rapping about the switch, why are they the people putting you over? You just told me you got switches. That's why I say you can't get mad at the police for doing their job. That's their job. You just make it easy for them. That's what it is. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna be crazy. I stay out the way. <laughs> that ain't my lane. I be chilling. But we ain't no hoes though. Watch <laughs> up, people. You gotta always protect yourself. But don't yeah. you know? Like when I grew up, and the most gangsters niggas you didn't know about, you just at heard all, about. You know, all. they didn't talk. They didn't rap. Like. Like, the, the gangs used to have rappers rapping their life for them, not actually being a rapper. You gotta, you, and you gotta choose what you wanna be. You wanna be the rapper or you wanna be the gangster? Yeah. You wanna be both? Something gonna catch up with you. Yeah, you can't do both, bro. You gotta, you gotta be in all in this rap shit or all out. I think rap the most dangerous shit ever. Yeah, you think I'll be in the streets of being a rapper? Nigga, know where my show at? Yeah, for real. Nigga put a female on your truck. Man, they got the car, they rolled it. Now you gotta go around these lonely ass street, not knowing who they about to hit at you with that stick. That's dangerous. Yeah. Like, they know where you at. You got three cars, they might just hit at all three of them. But it's like a rapper, so I'm like, man, you know, hey, but if you could go around it, not do it. But at the same time, if you came from it, you know, it is what it is, you know. But like, I tell people, R&B artists don't go through rap beef. They <laughs> go through like no shootings and stuff. You never got R and B artists getting killed. Oh man, yeah. And then tripping with that rap beef and that shit. Whack. I told a nigga, I said, man, hey, but if I start a record label, that bitch would call Death Row Two. I'm putting life insurance on everybody. That's starting your beef. <laughs> Fuck that, what y'all want rap about? Nah, that's me, not... me and all the policy on everybody. I don't care. Hey, go what? If your music flop, I'm starting your rap beef. So I'm gonna win. That's <laughs> just what the fuck gonna happen. Hey, that's hey. the way the game is right now, though. But that's what the music is. That's what, that's what you have to think about. It. The last past 10 artists that signed Empire, damn it, got killed. I'm about to, I'm about to put a budget higher. Oh, oh, you rapping about such and such? I'm about to put a budget on that. I'm going to get paid on you all the times. Your dead music and your dead ass. That's just what's going on. That's what I tell people, you know. If you is going to do it, get that shit off the internet. Keep it up. What happened on the internet? Should never, like, what happened in the streets should never touch the internet. Never. Never. 
And so with that being said, the kids that are watching this interview right now, like, what's your message to them? Man, stay in school, stay focused, and listen to your parents, because listen, life ain't no joke. <laughs> Get hard out here, but just stay focused and chase your dreams. Because anybody telling you not to chase their dreams, bro, they didn't chase their dreams and they mad and bitter, my brother. So chase your dreams and get that because it's closer than you think. Shit can turn around overnight. Trust. Right. Trust. I ain't telling kids to their parents either because sometimes their parents fuck up. Like my mama, my mama ain't ever give me no good advice. Eat your vegetables, either. man. Yeah, eat your vegetables, but <laughs> and sometimes your mama don't tell you always good advice because, you know, they probably went through things. You know, everything yeah. ain't, you know, you got to take it for what, like, for what it is sometimes. Gotcha. So, all right, what's next for you? Well, next up on the lineup is I have a performance in my city at a trail ride June 15th. And I also have the boss man d June 15th. And I believe I'm going to be opening up for No Cap June 16th, the Sunday in Houston. Yeah, and I got a tape coming out in October with a No Cap feature on there. We going crazy. We working. We working. Harder than hard. And I have another performance at the Cajun Dome again, June 29th. It's, a, it's called an Influencer Fest. That's for kids, actually. So bring the kids. <laughs> bring the kids. For real. And last but not least, tell the world, like, what can they find you at on social media and everywhere else? Y'all can find me on Instagram at underscore P-A-P-I-Z-O-O. -O. That's Poppy Zoo. On YouTube at Poppy Zoo. And... I got a new single out called Sports Mode. It's going crazy. Y'all tune in, tap in, turn me up. And all DJs, if you're watching this, lock in with us. We're trying to get in every rotation in Louisiana. We're trying to take over the world, really. So hit us up. Real good business. BFL. If you ain't doing an interview with Nola Zine, what you doing an interview for?